another Big Jimny video. This is one that we're taking over at the Big Jimny Meet 2023 at Oldham Aston. And we have here a Jimny that I know some of you have been waiting to see because you've been commenting on the forum about this Jimny. And also Stuart has been uh, putting some of his build descriptions on the Big Jimny forum. So it is here, it is in the flesh. So I welcome Stuart to our, our meet. Yeah, thank you very much. So Stuart, this is the car that we've all seen and you've yeah. got something that a lot of people have said that you can't actually do yes that you can't take it to this kind of specification yeah so would you like to run me through what you've done to this car yeah sure so i'll give a backstory is i had a mx5 before which i paid someone else to turbo um so i kind of had that experience in a nice turbo vehicle which is a load of fun got a sausage dog absolutely terrified of it so i had to sell it within a year so I felt a bit defeated with that so uh, but that by that time i paid someone else to do it so um my friend from work was winding me up that he was getting a chimney and i didn't really know anything about them at first so i sort of just sort of i was going look at them they're terrible you can't get a chimney and then all of a sudden that i was sort of finding them like rare pokemon seeing them on the road yeah sort of got a soft spot for one and ended up purchasing it uh, straight away realizing um how what well, i felt was quite underpowered the 1300 especially on hills and things so then that sort of started the sort of taste to get some um some more power um so from there i just used the forum and looked for you know the standard upgrades um and I realized, so the first thing I actually got was custom headers uh, from Australia, randomly. So put that on, still felt it could do with some more power. So got the one six, so got the Suzuki Liana, put that in. Had, so this is a Suzuki Liana 1.6? This is a 1.6 Suzuki Liana, non-VVT. Non yeah. um, put that in. So I had that for a year, it was great. Um, found it was a bit, well actually say two years, I was finding it kept failing emissions and I kept having to sort of go to this dodgy MOT place and it was all just, you know, the car smell of fumes um, and I've got a now two and a half year old daughter so I was always a bit wary about the fumes. So I was like, well, I'm going to have to put a new ECU in it so it can actually fuel properly because I think with the 1.6 it's not ideal and I had the, the headers and the exhaust so it it wasn't it wasn't um, firing properly so then i sort of got the idea why well, if i'm going to put the ecu in i might as well put the turbo in so i just started researching really and it's quite easy in some ways i kind of feel like it seems more difficult than it is um the first thing i bought so literally i just bought loads of parts and just like a magpie to sort of accumulate them in a cupboard you know it was all just the little things that the most sort of tricky bits uh so the first thing i got which was reasonably easy to get was the garrett turbo so this is um a garrett gbc 17. um so it's these small journal turbos which they brought out um ideal for small engines yeah. um I think I only pay, say only, but in the car world, I think it was 500 pounds. So I bought this and then um, the other thing I managed to find an intercooler that just fits under here. Again, I just went on a website called Turbo Centrum. You just sort of just had to look for the diameters that fit. Yeah. And I believe it's two and a half inch. So. I think the idea is the bigger the flow, the better, but really in this sort of power, it doesn't really make a difference apparently. Um, so I did that. So the next thing I bought off the shelf, a manifold, log manifold, to put the turbo on. I took it to the fabricator who was going to put the exhaust, who was going to do the downpipe. And he soon realized because it was designed for a Swiss Sport, it was all the wrong way around. Yeah. In my ignorance, I just thought it'd work. The Swiss sports a transverse engine. Yeah, yeah, so it was all, it was all clashing. So then he gave, he said, look, I can make you up a whole manifold. So he did pretty well now. I think he only charged me, I say only, I think it was like 900 pounds yeah. for like the custom manifold. 
and the downpipe. So that was the majority of it done. So when I left there, he put all the original stuff back on. So I left with the manifold and I had the turbo. The rest was, the most time consuming thing was just getting the little bits, like the little bits of intercooler pipe, yeah. getting the different sizes. It's, you can try and measure it, the amount of stuff I bought and then realize it doesn't fit properly and then had to, yeah. it just sits on the shelf. So yeah, so when I got back, so anyway, so I got back with that and then that was the time where the car was going to be out of order. I could no longer run it if I started building it. So from there, I took off all the old exhaust header, had that off, strapped this in, the new manifold log, which is really easy, clamped this all in. He made the, the fabricators did it all for me, so I just sort of bolted on, dressed all this in and then Literally, this just comes in the old air box yeah. on the other side. Yeah. So that side of it is really easy because that's just big bits that just clump on. So there's, there's nothing hard about that. It was more like sourcing the other stuff. So because the turbo is going to use more fuel, I had to get bigger injectors. Yeah. Um, there was no information on what injectors, injectors what size yeah. they are. They are just Denzos and they are the same size as the Mazda RX-8, which is common in the Mazda MX-5 world for the turbo. So weirdly, I've gone right back to buying again um, RX-8 injectors. So I put them in. RX-8 injectors, because that's a big question that always comes up when you're doing these sorts of jobs. Yeah. What injectors are, so it's Mazda RX-8. Mazda RX-8 yellow injectors. Yellow, right. Yeah, yeah. You can normally just... You could, they're quite easy to tell the size. If you find someone selling them, if you get one of the old injectors and just measure it, yeah. it's quite forgiving. Yeah. Um, and then just the O-rings go on and it yeah. just seems to work. Good. Um, so yeah, then I bought the new ECU. So I got um, a Link ECU because I've, I, there's a local tuner and that's what I use. Apparently the best thing to do is if you find whoever's mapping cars around you, use the software they're most used to. Yeah. Um, can work out a bit cheaper because they're not having to sort of learn the new um, program to set it up. So I got a Link Monsoon ECU. Again, that was like 800 pounds. Um, so I got that. And then the second thing, if you have a turbo, you then need a wideband uh, Lambda sensor. So I've got this um Haltech sensor here right. so again quite expensive it's like 250 quid yeah. Uh, yeah so they were the sort of expensive bits um so i had it like that so then i was a little bit before this i i was thinking well i'll just get someone to wire it it can't be too bad you know i know you know i, was, I got the wiring diagram i was looking through it <clears throat> People started selling silly prices, wanting like two and a half thousand pounds to wire it. So I was like, well, I better learn quick how to do it myself. So I paid for an online course, which is HPA Academy. So it's High Performance Academy. Uh, they do loads of courses. I think they're based in New Zealand and they're affiliate with Link and Haltech and all the big ECU manufacturers. So I think I paid a hundred pounds for a basic wiring course. Um, and it's actually quite easy. If you just look at what your engine has, this is the very basic things. You know, you've got your ignition, your cam, your crank, and, that. and they're quite crude, really, the signals. You know, it seems complicated, but it's almost like where you have like one of those old school hi-fis, yeah. and you just have to sort of plug in the old things. So I got the wiring diagram. I just literally had no idea what I was looking at for weeks just every evening just looking through it and slowly i sort of deciphered how it was supposed to be you know they they say it sort of flows down um i was going to have a, a retired electrician that i know family friend but i think he seemed very keen at the beginning and then sort of sort of went very sort of off the radar so i was pretty much on my own at this point so um yeah it took a bit of time but i managed just to to figure it out so got it all ready and then um, got it shipped out. So shipped out, got it um, picked up to the rolling road. 
and then um, they took it from there. So. Right, so when you get to the rolling road, what's the figures? This is, this is what people want to know. What's the figures on this one? Uh, well, first he went, um, didn't go as powerful as I want, but I think he was a bit cautious. He took forever to do it. You know, it was actually a garage, cars going in and out all the time. And I thought, you know, I wouldn't have any problems here, but he took months to do it. So I think by this point, he was wary of breaking the car or having a problem with the car. So he went safe on the boost. So he went to 0.4 boost um which was i think first it was 149 brake horsepower 149 yeah i'm not sure the exact torque but it was quick um i then changed the exhaust at the back so yeah. got like um instead of having even though it was a custom exhaust it kind of had the original back box that went around and out i felt like that was a bit of a bottleneck so i was really just trying to get um as least restriction as i could so i put the double exhaust on the back so it's pretty much going straight through. It's got a sports cat um, and a little silencer and then put this big old uh, Japanese um, air filter on. He's then put it up to half a bar. So now it's, it's 156 brake horsepower and 149 foot pounds of torque. So it's quite quick. Yeah. Probably qu too quick really for a Jimny, but it's um, kind of adds to the fun of it. Um, because you can't feel like you're in this like really high powered thing, but in reality, you're not actually going that fast. <laughs> and uh, I mean, people always talk about reliability after doing all the boosting and that. How far have you come today? Um, so I have a two hour drive. Um, I was on holiday the other day, so that was um, four hours drive and before, yeah. previously. I think it's probably almost- So it's good and solid. It then. should technically be more reliable now because yeah. um, I've kind of gone over, say, over the top. I've got all the safety parameters. So it's got a, a Bosch knock sensor. So if it's, if it's um, detecting any um, knock or pre-ignition, you know, it's going to adjust the revs. You see, well, the ECU is now, you know, the latest software, you know, processing all this information super quickly. Yeah. So technically it should be fine. Um, <clears throat> it's only running half a bar. I mean, I spoke to some engine builders when I was um, looking to modify it, and they're saying, oh, half a bar's nothing, you know, like, you know, even old school sort of engine builders yeah. um, are saying, yeah, half a bar is, you know, shouldn't affect anything. Yeah. Um, so I've got a temperature gauge as well, and that just always sits about 90 degrees. So, so touch wood, it's been very healthy. You know, I've kind of always just waited for something to break, but nothing's sort of broken yet, so. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks for that walk round. Excellent. I guess there's only one thing now to do, and that's to actually try it. Yes. So yeah, I'll, I'll take you for you a spin. Thank you at this point to Stuart, and we will go out and uh, see what it actually does. Thank you. and quiet of home after another great big Jimny event. I hope you enjoyed that uh, video featuring a very special Jimny from uh, Stuart. If you did like it then remember to press the like key and if you want to see more of these sort of videos and be in notified when they come then press the subscribe button. 
So that's it for now. Until the next video and until the next big junior meet, it's uh, cheerio.